The number one most important mathematical concept for understanding neural networks in all of deep learning is the dot product. Quoting a computer science professor I recently spoke to, sure, knowing calculus is nice, but the only math concept you need to know to get started in deep learning is the dot product. So why is this one thing that you learned a while ago in physics to calculate work and electric flux and AB cosine theta, why is that being used here? Well, let me quickly explain to you what the dot product is before I explain you that. On a high level, what the dot product is, is a measurement of how similar two vectors are. If we look at it geometrically, if two vectors point in the same direction, their dot product is going to be positive. If they point in opposite direction, their dot product is going to be negative because they kind of have a negative similarity. They're negatively similar, you know. If their dot product is zero, that shows that they are perpendicular because there's no way for them to be similar at all. They're what's known as probably part of the standard basis that you set for this space. You could also think of the dot product as projecting one vector onto the span of another vector, let's say b onto a, and then finding its length, which case, this case is going to be the blue. Computationally, what you're doing is you're multiplying matching pairs of coordinates together and adding them all up. So the 3 multiplies by the 1 to get 3, and the 4 multiplies by the 2 to get 8, which gives you 11. Now that we understand the dot product, let's look at an example of how we're going to apply it to a perceptron. Let's say that you're trying to decide whether or not you should go to a certain restaurant tonight and your two criteria are going to be how much money you have to spend and how far away the restaurant is. So in the context of these problems, those are our inputs. And so now what we need to do is we need to adjust the two weights that these two input neurons are connected to. So there's going to be a weight one here and a weight two here. So what are they? Well. I personally feel like having money is probably going to be more important than how far away it is because if you know if you don't have money you're not getting a meal but if it's far away you can still get there. So what I'm going to do is set the first weight to 2 and set the second weight to 1 right there. And now that we have our weight set let's just package up our inputs into a vector like so and also our weights into a vector as well. So the first one is going to have a weight of 2, the second one's going to have a weight of 1 and this is going to be equal to w. So this is going to be our main basic equation right here. It's kind of very similar to y equals mx plus b. And the order doesn't really matter here. The w is going to be your m. And you also need to add a b term, which is the bias. We're just going to set that to 1 just so that it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter in this case. But what you actually do with this dot product is you do x dotted with w. You switch that equal to x transpose w. And this is just because in order for the matrix multiplication to work, the number of rows, or the number of columns of the inputs must equal the number of rows of this weight matrix so that we're ultimately going to get x1, x2 as a row matrix multiplied by 2, 1 from the weights. That way, this dot product will work out. And so if we actually compute this, you're going to get 2x1 plus x2 and then plus our bias of 1. This kind of looks like a linear equation though. So what happens if we try to graph this in feature space? And this is what our graph looks like in feature space where the x-axis is going to be how much money we have, our first input. The y-axis is going to be our second input, how far away it is. And as you can see, this, so this line right here represents a decision, decision boundary. So basically anything right of this line is going to be one variable, the other one is going to be the other classification. Classification, not variables. So basically what I'm saying is that anything, hmm, see, this is something that we need to adjust as part of deep learning, we need to adjust our weights and biases. The weights look pretty okay, but I'm just going to, instead of choosing one as our, as our bias, I'm actually going to do just something like negative, negative two even, just so that we can say that as long as you have a money above one, which in this case could be like ten dollars, or and it's greater than probably two miles, then you should go to the restaurant. Or then you shouldn't go to the restaurant. Otherwise you should go as long as it's underneath here because you can't really have negative distances. That's part of deep learning though, training your weights and biases. But the point is that get the dot product gives you this line that represents your decision bait, your decision line that the neural network uses to ultimately do its binary classification. Now that we trained our perceptron, let's add a third input feature. 
let's say it's the number of friends that are going with you to this restaurant. Because if you have more friends that are coming with you and you're in a bigger group, you're more likely to be want to eat with them. So let's give it kind of a weighting of three, just because I feel like that could be even more important than money, but really doesn't matter. What matters is that we have a 3D vector now. So our decision line is going to be in three space now. So if you actually take this dot product, you get 2x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus 3 of x3. And if we change this x1 to x, this x2 to y, this x3 to z, and we actually graph it, in 3 space we get a plane. So what this means is basically any, if, I guess if we have red is going to be our amount of money you have, the green is going to be the distance, as long as they're both positive you're going, which makes sense. And here it's saying as long here it's saying as long as you have a positive number of friends going or zero, then you'll go. Actually it's a little bit greater than one, but I'm just gonna count down to zero. But here it's basically saying as long as you have friends coming with you, you have money to go and the distance isn't too high, you'll go and eat dinner with your friends. That's what this decision matrix is. That's what this the plane decision plane is saying, which we got through the dot product. Dot products are also really important in actually a more recent version of neural networks, which are called transformers, specifically with the idea of self-attention. What you do in self-attention is you basically take your input data and you want to output, you want to put it into something called transformer. You output only the way well, you output a matrix of only relevant features. So you select your attention on only important parts. You do this through having a query, which is what you're looking for, keys, which is your individual input elements and how they're position, position weighted. You take the dot product of both of them, which is just Q transpose K. You do a little bit of scaling on it, just standardize it. You take the dot product of that with your value matrix and you get an eval important values matrix as your output. Uh, Q transpose K over scaling, that's actually going to give you something called a similarity matrix. With each element on each axis, it tells you how similar each elements are there. And it makes sense the elements on the diagonal are 100% similar. But then over here and here, it tells you that this is 60%, 50% similar. And you use that to multiply it with the values matrix. But you're only able to get your important values and your values matrix through the dot product. The dot product of Q and your queries and your keys show you how similar they are in the, in the same way the dot product tells you how similar two vectors are. And it's basically, this is going to be your attention score, your Q dotted with K. Now you see why understanding how the dot product works gives you the key to understanding how neural networks work, which is probably the most in concept, important concept of linear algebra in deep learning, really of math in general, I would say. If you do want to learn more about the fundamental math behind deep learning, especially with regards to gradient descent and that algorithm, I actually made a video where I explained the vector calculus behind that. And then also a follow-up video where I actually coded it in a Python notebook to show you a more tangible example of it. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this useful.